Yeah. Well, yeah, well, when you kind of see, like, the, the album At War with the Mystics, you know, I guess... I, I don't know if it was the original intent, but I guess a lot of people could say that, you know, that was a political statement about President Bush. But it's kind of interesting was in place in the modern context, you know, 12 years later, it doesn't gather any dust. <laughs> well, I think these are music is a great place to sort of put your frustration into. You know, I think it does allow us all to have a great thing to sing about. But I think it wore the mystics. Part of it is our frustration as well is that, you know, music doesn't really change this this higher aggressive thing. You know, music is really meant for us passive, sensitive people to share an idea with. But passionate, sensitive people aren't the ones up there that need to be changed, you know. So, you know, we know that. I mean, I'd say we know the difference between singing songs about our frustration and then actually doing something about it. And that's why I think at War with the Mystics, part of us is just not embarrassed about it, but we feel as though it sends the wrong idea about what we think. You know, we were making what we thought at the time was ridiculous protest music, which is what I thought a lot of, of even the original hippie protest music was like. I thought it was, it sounded so cool, sounded so aggressive, and sounded so freaky that it would take you a lot of listeners to understand that something like one of our favorite songs is uh, War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Yeah. It would take you a long time to realize that's an anti-war song because it just sounds like a fucking yeah. <laughs> insane, freaky explosion, you know? And I think that's why it's so genius. But I don't think it was... It, whoever it was turning on wasn't going out there and trying to stop the war. Yeah. They were having a war inside their minds that they were loving. I mean, it's just not, music just doesn't do that, you know? And I think we were making music in the same way to have this frustration be vented, but yet it add to the frustration because you're singing about something that you really can't stop. Well, what's cr- about something you really, yeah. yeah. You don't understand it. You know? Oh, yeah. it's crazy too. Is like, you know, I was re-listening to it the other day and, and I, I was listening to Free Radicals, and it creeped me out that it name drops Donald Trump. <laughs> it does. I know, and, and I I think about it all the time because people will point it out. And I think it does show you the absurdity of the character that we, <laughs> you know, that we saw in him. We like this guy is so absurd. Of course, you can see through him. But again, it's like, but, you know, if you're listening to Flaming Lips music, I'm not that concerned that you're going to that you're out there changing the world in a bad way. Yeah. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, and, and I don't know. I mean, I don't think it, it does anybody any good to think about those things too much. You yeah. Know, it's yeah. not that serious. Whatever you're going to say in a song is not that serious. and is not that stupid. It's well, just a song. And know? once it's released, it's, uh, it's out of your hands of how it's interpreted. Exactly. Which we want, you know, most of our music gets interpreted for the better. It makes us seem, smarter and kinder and everything than we yeah. probably really are and, and occasionally it makes you seem probably more shallow and stupider <laughs> than you are and do the you, truth is somewhere in the middle you know do you subscribe to the idea of the now well what, what, what would you mean give me give like me um being aware of the moment and and i guess in terms of how you you might view the world in the idea of being totally into whatever space you're standing in rather than um, either looking back on it later on? I mean, being aware of where you are um, subconsciously or consciously at any given time? Well... Like appreciation, I I guess? Well, I I don't think you... I I don't think anybody really can, really. I mean, even even if we put into, like, the context of uh, Sean White winning the gold medal the other night, you know, um, you know, we're, we're caught in this, the meaning of everything. And so if Sean hadn't, you know, been winning gold medal since he was 10 years old and he hadn't, you know, not won the gold medal four or five years ago, whenever it was, and there wasn't this great story and this great meaning and this great build up to him winning the gold medal, it's we can live in the moment, but the moment is just another moment. You know, it doesn't yeah. have any meaning to you. It's like, okay, that's great that he won, but what does it mean? You know? And so 
we have to know, even if even if it's just a subjective meaning, to what does it mean to us? And that that, that it comes from a lot of you know pain and struggle, reaching no pain and no struggle. You know things that you want turning into things that you don't get. You know that there's a, you know who is it? Is it William Burroughs? I forget who it is that says you know pleasure is really just the absence of pain. You know, yeah. it's not it's not an attainable goal from nothing. It's working from a negative to to a nothing, you know. Yeah. And so I don't know. I mean I don't think you can really live that way, you know, and not be on some kind of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think we I think we do take you know, a, a, a drugs and we do want to get in states of mind that we're relieved from them. I mean certainly when we were watching Sean the other night, because of its it, it, what it meant to us, we were kind of living exactly in the moment. But that moment is built up of all this meaning from the past of what it's going to mean in the future. Yeah. And that, that sort of gives the now its great emphasis. But without all that stuff around it, the now is just another invisible now amongst a billion other invisible nows. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, you have to focus it and say, this matters. And you're doing that every day as well. You know? What has... Um surprised you most about getting older hi sorry this is jasmine we only have time for one more if that's all right okay yeah that's okay. fine uh, yeah i'll be quick i'm sorry <laughs> uh yeah i only had two questions left anyways um okay um, the, the well, first I mean, to me i mean i mean getting older um i think it's it, i'm very surprised at how much um your your energy and your health plays into it and it's easy to think when you're young that um it's all about your state of mind, and it's all about being smart and all that. But as you get older, I think your energy and the way you the way you physically feel in your in your body does absolutely connect into your yeah. mind and your state of your mind. And um, well, you know, so it, it bodes well for anybody to always try to be as healthy as you can be, and always try to be as happy as you can be, and always try to not get damaged or injured. You know, and because all those things, I think. They really do play into a really great, great, you know, way of being. But if, if you don't have your feet and your back and your arms, by the time you get to be 40 years old, you don't, you don't like living very much, you know. Well, your brain is, yeah. is just there for those things. It's just there to keep you alive and keep you happy. But it's not, it's not, a, it's not a mental thing. It's, it's everything about you gets connected, yeah. is, is, what I, is what I found, yeah. Well, my final question is... Um, what has a life immersed in music and creating and, and interacting with people and traveling the world? Um, what does that touch you about what it means to be a human being? Well, that's a great, great, um, you know, ever evolving answer. But I mean, being an introvert for me, you know, growing up as a, like thinking of being like a painter or being an artist or whatever, but just my personality was a lot more introverted and. I think I went, I was lucky that little by little I would go be able to go against this desire to be by myself or to be, you know, make art in this, you know, in solitude or whatever. And I think without being in a group that got to travel the world and had to confront, you know, all kinds of things and meet all kinds of people, I, I probably would have never been open, you know, open to it and even seen it. And so all these experiences, you know, if you're lucky... Um, can can really change you into having a great understanding and empathy of, of everything in the world. You know, something great happens to someone, uh, you go, oh man, it's wonderful that that happened to you. And something horrible happens to someone, you say, man, I, I can really relate to that. That's that's horrible. And you know, you you don't sit there in a jealousy, or you don't sit that sit there and not be concerned. You know, because everybody is sharing the same life as you. That's what you find out if you travel and are open to it and, you know, and, and, and try to, you know, try to really understand what you're doing in the moment. And, um, but I think I've been really lucky. You know, all the things that have happened to us have happened a little at a time. And, um, you know, you get to adapt to it and you get to, you know, find yourself in that. And we've never really had to be confronted with, you know, giant amounts of money and giant amounts of fame and giant amounts of failure and, disappointment or whatever it's been a little of this a little of that you get used to it a little bit of this a little bit of that you know you get to you're lucky you get to find yourself in it as it goes yeah. 
So I think we've just been insanely lucky in that way to keep, you know, being awake and being open to things and learning and not being too fucked up by it all. <laughs>